Topographic maps are tools that help represent elevation through the use of contour lines. The maps here show two different ways of representing a hill. As you can see, the center portion of the map represents the highest elevation. Therefore, objects in the center portion of the map have the highest potential energy. You should also notice that this hill has two enclosed contour lines at the top portion of the hill one of which encloses point B. Enclosed contour lines represent high points. Therefore, point B has a higher elevation than point A and more gravitational potential energy. You should also notice the presence of ridges and valleys formed by the hill. Contour lines of the valleys form V's or U's that point towards the top of the hill. Contour lines depicting ridges form V's or U's that point away from the top of the hill. When rain falls on such a landscape, water will run off from the top of the hill and into the valleys. In this case, water will end up running from point B to point D or through one of the other valleys formed by this hill. The maps in this image show one of the peaks of the Henry Mountains in the state of Utah. The peak has an elevation of over 7,000 feet and forms multiple ridges and valleys. Can you tell which portions of the map form ridges or valleys? Ridges are the higher portions of the hillside. They typically form because there is more resistance to the flow of water and tend to undergo less erosion than the valleys. In this map, regions A and C represent the ridges. Valleys are formed because rock and soil are eroded. Once a valley starts to form, the slopes become steeper and water has more energy to erode the rock and soil away. Soil from the formation of the valley is deposited at the bottom of the valley, creating a good place to grow crops. Valleys are also prone to flooding because water typically drains into the valleys. Regions B and D represent the valleys of this landscape. A depression is a relatively sunken part of the Earth's surface. A closed depression has no natural outlets for surface drainage of water. Dry lakes or ponds, craters, and sinkholes are all examples of depressions. These maps depict sinkholes that tend to form in parts of Florida. Depressions are represented by hashed contour lines. Notice how the contour lines surrounding features B and C are hashed. That means the elevations are going down instead of up, and a depression forms. During a rain event, water would collect in these depressions and form pools or puddles. Sinkholes are formed when water chemically dissolves rock or soil layers, causing the surface to collapse into a depression. Look at the index contour lines, the ones that have a value, and notice that the elevation on this map is increasing as you move from the bottom of the map to the top of the map, or from south to north. At an elevation of about 6,600 feet, the contour lines become very close together. This indicates that you are rising in elevation rapidly over a short distance. This feature is called a cliff. Above the cliff, the contour lines are not close together. This indicates a flat area at a high elevation. This landform is referred to as a butte. This map is from Promontory Butte in Arizona. Points C and D are at the top of the butte, with D being about 60 feet higher than C. However, point A would not be visible from point D because the butte at C blocks the view. 